Hi friends, Mickey Mancus here and welcome to Off the Back Door. Today I'm going to be making creamy scalloped potatoes with ham. Join me. We are at the tail end of a snow ice storm, so the weather's nasty out. And when we have nasty weather, it's really cold, we enjoy comfort food. So that's why I'm going to be making the scalloped potatoes with ham. Um, you can make plain scalloped potatoes if you want, but it always adds a little extra if it has that ham in there. Um, if you're not quite sure what scalp means, it means thinly sliced. And so that's why I'm going to be using my handy dandy mandolin here so that I can slice all of these up. I'm doubling the recipe. Okay, so what you're going to start with would be about two pounds of potatoes thinly sliced. I will give you the recipe for a single batch, but I'm going to be doubling it because I plan on giving some of this to my family members. Um, so what you want to start with is two pounds of potatoes thinly sliced. I am leaving the peels on this time, so I need to get them scrubbed up really well. Two pounds will equal probably about mm, six medium potatoes. I'm also going to be using canned milk and canned butter out of my pantry in this recipe. So, let me get scrubbing these so I can get ready to start slicing. I cut all of my washed potatoes in half just because it's easier for me to work with when I drop it down in here. I've got a flat surface right away. Okay, and here's how nice and thin I want you to be cutting up your scalp potatoes. I'm going to finish cutting all of these up, throw them in the bowl, and then I'm going to start slicing my onions. You're going to want one onion sliced up thinly also. As usual, um, I didn't use a big enough bowl or I just cut too many potatoes. I do want to soak these in water for a little bit while I'm getting everything else ready and then when we make the roux. Um, so I'm just going to dump them in a bucket that I've got here. I'm going to put some cool water in here and let them soak. Now I do leave these whole when I put them into the mandolin holder, as long as they fit. Otherwise I cut them in half. And when I was slicing up my potatoes and I told you, you know, I was leaving the peels on, you don't have to, you can peel them if you'd like. And I did not plant enough onions last year. Um, I decided to do some red onions besides just the yellow onions. I ended up shortchanging myself. So I have to remember this year to plant plenty of onions. I'm going to slice these at the same thickness that I did the um, potatoes. And I'm just going to toss these in the bowl that I have the potato slices in. And um, also, if you do not care for onions, like some of my family members, you don't have to put the onions in if you don't want. Okay, I do have to say, I really like this mandolin. My sister bought it for me a couple of years ago for Christmas. And I did find one on Amazon similar to this. So if you are interested, I'll leave a link below and you can go check that out. So I'm going to clean up this little mess here and then we're going to get to chopping up the ham. I pulled a hunk of ham out of the freezer. I let that thaw. Um, I'm just going to dice it up into like bite-sized pieces. I have used my canned ham in the past before. In fact, just the other day, yeah, it's really watery because I had pulled it out of the freezer. Um, the other day I went to the grocery store and I was walking past and I saw the hams in there and I thought, ooh, good. And all of a sudden I noticed the price of the ham was $5.38 a pound. And I looked at one of the hams and it was like $76. I mean, I'm like, who's gonna pay that much? Please tell me. I know hyperinflation is like bonkers right now. The shelves are empty everywhere, but give me a break. There's a friend of mine that has a butcher shop and they also raise meat. And they said right now it is so hard for them, the prices of the grain to feed their animals and stuff, um, their livestock, and as far as fertilizer and whatnot, I'm glad I still had ham in the freezer because I was thinking about canning some more up. Okay, so the onions are all sliced thinly. Those are ready to go. And like I said, um, we're going to be making a roux. Now, 
I don't want you to panic thinking, what's a roux? I don't know how to make a roux that's fancy. No, it's very simple and I'm gonna show you how. Let me finish cutting this up and then we'll get over to the stove top. First thing to make your roux is you need some butter. You want three tablespoons of butter. We're gonna melt it on a low heat. I'm using my butter that I just canned up. If you didn't see that video, I'll leave you a link so you can go check it out. All right, so for me, I'm going to need six tablespoons. If you follow me, you know how I measure. Let's see, one, two, three, four, oh, a little bit more. While this is melting down, I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm also going to be adding flour to my butter once it's all melted. And what you're going to need is three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. You're also going to need a quarter teaspoon of black ground pepper and one teaspoon of salt. Now I'm using regular white sea salt. And remember my amounts might look more because I'm doubling it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna sprinkle my salt and pepper into my flour. And I'm going to give it a little stir just to mix it in there nicely. We want all of our butter melted and we're pretty close to there already. I've got this on um, Kind of a low, medium type heat. The other thing we're gonna use, like I said, was milk. And you want two and a half cups of milk. Now, I'm using my whole milk that I had canned. So I am going to need five cups total. Man, I'm just making a mess all over the place, aren't I? The butter is melted, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my flour with the salt and pepper in here and I'm going to be mixing it. You want to mix it up well and it's going to start coming to a little bit of a boil and we're going to let it cook like that for at least one minute. Now what the roux is doing, um, it is going to be thickening. This is our sauce. All right, I don't know if you can see the bubbles in here already that it's boiling. So I'm just gonna time it for one minute and I'm gonna keep stirring it. I don't want it scorching. Okay, now you can see how bubbly it is. I'm going to be adding my milk. Stir that in. All right, I need to get one more cup in there and we're going to be bringing this to a boil. I've raised my heat to high right now and I am going to keep stirring. We want it to come to a boil and we will boil it for one minute and then we'll remove it from the heat. Okay, two reasons we wanna bring it to a boil. Um, one, the flour is thickening it up. You can see how thick it is right now. And also, you wanna get rid of that pasty flour taste and by boiling it, that's what's gonna get rid of that flavor. So we have a beautiful cream sauce right now. Let me get this on the table and we're gonna start layering. What I'm using is actually, this is called a lasagna pan. So it's a little bit bigger than a nine by 13. Um, you can use any type of a casserole dish that you want or baking dish. Just make sure that you spray it down or that you smear it full of butter so that it's coated because it's gonna make cleanup a lot easier. So I have rinsed my potatoes actually twice and I'm glad I did because the liquid was super cloudy. It had so much starch in it. So I drained a lot of that off. What I'm gonna do, kind of like lasagna, I am going to put a little bit of my sauce down first. I realized I said, you know, I was giving some of this to family members. Dad, if you're watching, don't worry. I'm not sending this to your house again. Last time I did it, I had onions in it. I thought I had cut back on the onions. Obviously I did not. He doesn't care for onions. Anyway. All right, so now that I have a little bit of the layer of sauce down, 
I'm just going to kind of toss a layer of my potatoes in here. Kind of like trying to deal cards when they're sticky. When's the last time you played Old Maid? <laughs> I'm the Old Maid. Now, I didn't cut up a whole lot of ham. You can add more ham if you want. You can leave the ham out. I really don't care. This is totally up to you. Um, you wouldn't be using this large of a baking pan if you were doing the single recipe. Okay, next I'm just going to layer on some of the onions. And they are cut super thin. Okay, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of the ham. I guess the nice thing I like about this recipe is it's not real expensive. Now I'm going to be putting more of the sauce. Now this does have to bake for a while. So keep that in mind if you do decide you want to try this. Prep takes a little bit of time and then the bake time is a little bit longer. As long as I've got a layer of sauce down again, I am just going to repeat and put more layers down. Now the thinner that you're slicing your potatoes, actually the faster it's going to cook. That's what's taking the time is allowing the potato slices to become tender. Okay, I'm just going to keep repeating this, um, the layers, until I am all out of everything. Um, just like I said, like a lasagna, and then I'll get to the next step. Okay, the very last layer that you want on top is going to be the potatoes. And I still have some of the roux left over, and I'm going to dump that on top and kind of smear it around. Sorry, I'm having a hard time holding it so that you can see it. And I'm just going to smoosh it around a little bit. Now, the recipe out of the Betty Crocker cookbook calls for dotting it with butter. I never have, so I just don't. If you'd like to dot this with butter, go ahead. My oven is ready um, at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It was beeping at me a little while ago. Okay, now before we put it in the oven, we need to cover it. If you happen to have a cover for your pan, wonderful. All right, I'm gonna pop this into the oven for 30 minutes. And once 30 minutes is up, then I'm gonna take the cover off and we're gonna bake it for another 60 minutes. Being my potatoes were sliced so thinly, I'm only going to leave them in there for another hour. Now, if your potato slices are a little bit thicker, you may want to bake them 70 minutes. So at that point, then I'll take it out of the oven. All right, obviously it's boiling hot right now and everything. You're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes before you dig into it. Actually, it's the middle of the afternoon and we're not ready to eat it yet. So in a short bit, I'm going to put foil over it and I'll set it aside. And then once I dig in, I will show you what it looks like. Now for the unveiling. Watch closely. Magic. Oh, there's a piece missing. <laughs> Okay, my sister stopped by to visit for a little bit and um, she decided that she wanted some also. So I gave her a little container of some of it to take home so she could have her supper, but um, it's still warm. So I am gonna try this out. You see this? Now it looks a little brown, like gravy on the top or whatever, and that's because the, um, the roux had browned and it's not gonna change taste any. In fact, my sister said it was pretty good. She kept nibbling out of her container, so. All right, here we go. Now that's good stuff. So anytime you think of comfort food, think of scalloped potatoes and ham. It's really good and it hits the spot. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you did like this, please give me a thumbs up and share. Leave any comments or questions down below, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, God bless.